China's much-anticipated nationwide carbon trading market is set to open its door at the end of this month. It means that the state will set carbon emission quotas so that highly polluting industries such as thermal power plants must purchase carbon emission quotas on the market when they go beyond their allotment. It's seen to accelerate the transition to green technologies. So what new investment opportunities will this bring to the private sector? How will it benefit China's overall goal of hitting peak emissions by 2030 and achieving carbon neutrality by 2060? Let's turn to our panelists. For the latest on the carbon trading market in China, Catherine Kong joining us from Beijing, CEO of Timing Carbon in Beijing, Qi Ye, Professor of Public Policy from Tsinghua University and Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. In Durham, Jackson Irwin, Senior Fellow at the Nicholas Institute of Environmental Policy Solutions and Adjunct Associate Professor at the Stanford School of Public Policy from Duke University. Last but not least, in New York, Anthony Chan, former J.P. Morgan Chase Chief Economist. What a pleasure to have all of you. I want to start by asking Professor Qi Ye, you've been working on the issue of carbon trading market in China for years. Uh, where are we now? Before the end of June, they say it's likely to happen. I think it will happen within a week. Uh, we'll, we'll see the first trading. The, uh, but, the, uh, you know, this thing is going to be a very big step because uh, it's going to co cover 4 billion uh, tons of carbon dioxide when it is yes. online. We're going to see the world's largest carbon market. Uh, but the, uh, in order to make this thing work, there are a lot more work to do. I think we need to be patient and give it time and to finally see how this, uh, this system works. I see. Uh, what kind the, of work the, to do? Well, the EU ETS uh, started in 2005. It's been, uh, you know, more than 15 years, and the the Chinese market will t will likely take years to uh, actually see the, uh, the 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 effect. Mm -hmm. I think the building the basic infrastructure, making sure that data is accurate and precise, sure. and also the you know all the mechanisms for verification, reporting, data measurement, you know, all of this fundamental work really need to be not only in place, but also in good quality. I see. Ms. Kong, you are doing it on a daily basis. After all, your company is trying to uh, coordinate companies to trade carbon. Data-wise, do we have accurate ones? Uh, you, you mean daily data of the yes. emission or uh, of our yes. streaming? No, we don't. We don't have. It, it, it's verified uh, yearly. So we know we know this third uh, uh, one uh, once a year. I see. Then it is hard for you, right? I mean, to do your job uh, in a way, because you have to do it every day, and and it is it is a, a varying factor. Yes. Yes. You can you can see that. For companies like yours on the front line, uh, what do you consider is the most important at the very beginning stage to get the market right? Uh, I think the right thing, uh, firstly, uh, keep the data correct. Uh, this is a fundamental thing. And uh, also, uh, I hope uh, they could accept uh, uh, financial institution and uh, investment entity to join this market uh, as soon as possible. Then they, they could, uh, the, the, this market can work with, okay. enough, uh, with uh, enough liquidity and capital. Mr. Chen, of course, when it comes to the financial institutions uh, and also investment banks, uh, it comes to your home turf. Uh, tell me more about uh, whether that is the most crucial step for now in China. I think that right now, given the way the world is, is moving, that climate change is more important. It is an important step, but we should not uh, ignore the fact that there are uh, some sort of uh, conflicts between uh, keeping the environment clean over the near term, and of course, uh, the challenges to economic growth, which means uh, that when economic growth is slowing down, there's going to always be a temptation to ease on some of the climate change uh, requirements uh, of a program like this. Mm. Mr. Irwin, your take. I think that one of the core characteristics of the Chinese system 
attempts to respond to precisely what Mr. Chan has just outlined, and that is that it is based on efficiency targets, which regulate the amount of emissions that a company can release relative to its overall production. This means that as companies produce more of a product, in the case of the power sector electricity, they gain more allowances to emit alongside that. The goal of the system is to make that more efficient mm -hmm. and to have them emit less per their output. The big question will be whether they ultimately pursue a hard cap on these emissions, similar to what we see in most other ETSs in the world, including in Europe. I see. So you are coming from different areas. Let's focus on some of the most important things first. Professor Chi, data. What about the collection of data? And how should the data be updated? And how will businesses use the data? Who will monitor the data? This is the most important thing that I see it from the very beginning of this carbon trade. Well, right now, the uh, the system is, re is relying uh, primarily on the reporting from the businesses. And now we're talking about uh, more than 2,000 of them, the, the power the power companies. And uh, also the quota the, the decided the uh, for each of the, these companies are also based on their self-reporting. Of course, there are going to be verification by mm -hmm. a third party and there, there are going to be approval by the government agencies. But initially, this is a huge amount of work the, for the government and for, for the third party as well. I see. So, this, the, so right now, I mean, the, the only way that we are starting this system is based on is the self-reporting. I just also want to mention one point that Professor Yun is talking about. Uh, right now, the focus is indeed for, on the efficiency, but ultimately, I think even by design, this system will will be moving toward uh, EU ETS-like system. You know, have a hard cap mm. because you know, without hard cap, we're not going to have a uh, you know really a meaningful okay. system. Uh, Mr. Irwin, what about that data uh, to the Europeans uh, who have started earlier? Uh, how the data are being collected, and what about that in North America and elsewhere in the world? Are they? Uh, catching up with the latest also? Sure. Well, China has <clears throat> made enormous strides in managing data collection, monitoring and reporting and verifying that data through a series of pilot exercises in some of the largest provincial and municipal economies in the country. So that experience has brought with it a lot of learning that the Ministry of Ecology and Environment has been able to incorporate into data collection and verification for the national system. Mm. Uh, as uh, Ms. Catherine mentioned earlier, much of the onus for this data collection comes on the covered entities, the companies themselves who have to report it out. Um, but there are various channels that ensure that that data is reliable like what? and is collected effectively in a registry. What kind of channels you're talking about? Well, there are different verification agencies, uh, both government and third party, that can ensure that the uh, stated emissions are, are true. There are auditing systems in place. There are penalty mm -hmm. systems in place as well for exceeding one's compliance obligations. So mm -hmm. there are, are checks. Um, that try to ensure that, that that data is there. There's the development of an early warning system that's currently underway, which will seek to find outliers in the data as it's reported. Sometimes those come not from any nefarious activity, but from just errors of decimal points and, and reporting. So uh, there is a, a, a kind of a large set of efforts, all of which is steered towards making sure that all participants in the market can trust right. the data that they see. Mm. Professor Chi, uh, we understand that you know, there are third party entities such as Mr. Owen just mentioned that are trying to make sure the data are correct, but how frequent should the data be updated um, and what does that mean, the current situation? 
Well, since the uh, the trading and the compliance is on a yearly basis, so right now the requirement is really not that high. I think right, right now the focus is to make this system operational before to before we make it effective. Right. So this is a uh, uh, the therefore the data accuracy and pre precision is a very uh, very important issue, but really not that urgent. Mm. So uh, so you know now we don't really. Uh, I mean, the, the, the requirement for high frequency data is not that high right now. Ms. Kong, as uh, a business uh, who is trying to do carbon trading, what do you think are some of the necessities? Could you list some of those for us, the priorities, make it work? Uh, I think this uh, uh, important, crucial thing is uh, include uh, data, and uh, and also, uh, you know, as uh, Mr. Chi said, uh, there's uh, not too much frequency in the in the market. So uh, the, 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 uh, I, I definitely uh, think there uh, should be more uh, financial institution and investment entity to join this uh, market and also the regulation. Tell me more about the regulation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, tra trading regulation is like, uh, uh, it's the, uh, it should be regulated by uh, these, uh, like uh, SOE, uh, these uh, these entities, uh, not just the uh, MOE. MOE is Mini Ministry of the Environment. Uh, so, uh, could could you tell me more about why would businesses regulate? Uh, it's because uh, it's a financial market. Soon or later, so at the first, uh, it's a spot market, it's a commodity market, but all these things should be. Uh, regulated by uh, by by financial uh, supervisor, uh, Mr. Chen. Yes, I think that uh, all these comments, uh, Professor Ewing and, and Professor Yi, uh, mentioned that uh, the data, of course, is is still not uh, adequate, uh, and the penalties in place that Professor Ewing talked about are crucial for that reason, because we have to make sure that if uh, the ability of these regulators uh, to monitor these uh, companies uh, is not perfect, that these companies uh, have uh, sufficient uh, penalty systems in place that they have a strong incentive uh, to do the right, right. thing. Uh, without that, I think we would, uh, we would not uh, make as much progress, but I am very confident that the, uh, that the system will have those in place. And slowly, uh, the Chinese system will start to approach the type of efficiency that we see in Europe. But again, Europe started in 2005, as Professor Yi mentioned, uh, you cannot expect the Chinese uh, system to uh, be exactly uh, at the same uh, stage as, as we see in Europe. Mm. Professor Chi, tell me more about the regulation part. Regulation right now, because let's just talk about the, the, the nature of the Chinese carbon market. The, uh, it's, uh, it's a little different, different than the, the EU system and also the system in the North America and other places. The very the the focus of the Chinese carbon markets are really uh, hoping uh, eventually to reduce car carbon uh, carbon emissions, and therefore the the this uh, the nature uh, of the carbon reduction is uh, so much more than the uh, the the feature for as a finance system and uh, that that's why we do not really see uh the any design of the derivatives uh mm -hmm. in this market and right now this market right, right now and for quite quite a long time i would uh, assume the uh, we're not going to see uh, very much uh, of the features you know of the market as a financial uh, as a financial system right. that we it is still years to come, market. I guess, in that regard. But but tell yeah. me more about uh, the cap thing because you and Mr. Irwin has been keep on talking about it. Uh, we understand now it's about the efficiency because in China there are various provinces, and these provinces are having very different ways of developing their economy. Some have to rely the power supply mainly based on coal. Of course, that's a very sensitive subject when it comes to carbon trading, but that's how things are. So Professor Chi, based on reality and the sustainability of the market for years to come, the Chinese way of doing it is to have 
make sure to make sure the efficiency is being considered rather than a hard cap. So, Professor Chi, tell me more about this system and how do you well, see this is likely to move to the next stage? Well, in a way, the current system, the system we're about to see in a week, is, uh, has evolved from the system, the pilot systems, the, the, the seven pilot uh, system that, that was started 10 years ago. Yes. You know, 10 years ago, over the last decade, China does not really have a hard cap overall. The, uh, for national na national target for cap, and uh, therefore in in the past decade there was a no reason there is a no, to to actually make a system with a hard cap, but right now the situation is totally diff different. Right, last year when President Xi made the announcement to achieve the carbon neutrality by 2060, basically now the country has a target right o overall we have 10 billion tons of carbon dioxide We're, we need to reduce the 10 billion the 10 billion tons to to essentially the zero right mm. the, 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 the by uh 2060 that that means over the course of next the the, the coming 40 years and we really have a, a hard cap but the, the system need to catch up the design of the system, which has evolved in a way from the previous system, now need to catch up, and uh, the, the, then, then we need to. Uh, you, we, we're about to see a, a hard cap. In, but, but, some, but, 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 Mr. Uh, Xi, I, I talked about the realities in China. Of course, the reality is anywhere in the world. But China's, for example, Shanxi Province, is a province that's based on you know coal consumption. Uh, and the, the power supplies in China, a lot of them are coal power plant. So it is very hard to eliminate them all, all at once. Uh, and, and the country's uh, uh, power supply comes from many of it. So, so Ch Professor Chi, given the reality rather than idealism, uh, how do you see the current system? And how long do you see this is likely to be a process to phase out the current one, which is mainly focused on efficiency, then to focus on a hard cap possibility. It, the, the hard reality is 97% of all the resource endowment is, you know, for energy is coming from coal. And uh, in, in terms of system, you know, 20 years ago, the system really relied for four quarters of energy comes from coal, but yeah. coal essentially has already peaked uh, at, uh, the year 2013, where we have 4.2 billion tons of coal produced and cons consumed that year. And over the last eight years, we have seen the coal in the last eight years never, I never see. exceeded the uh, that, that number in the last eight years. Now, why that, why, why did that happen? Because, you know, over the last, last uh, eight years, we have seen the very rapid growth of clean energy, wind and solar, the you know, hydro, nuclear, the you know all this energy has been been increasing to substitute the coal that would have been used for power, for coal-fired power plant. But that is not happening, right? So this year, 2021, 20, 20, we probably will see a little bit of increase of coal, but maybe a little bit even more than the year in 2013. But this is not, really, that's not a major problem. The overall trend, the overall trend is the coal is going to be phased out, I, I think, quite rapidly. I'm very optimistic about that. Look at the power car, power generation, right? Right now, we're seeing like, you know, uh, 15 the tiny cents per kilowatt hour of uh, the, we're talking about the, the, uh, the, the price. Mr. Erwin, you want to have your take on this? Certainly, I agree with Professor Chi's assessment, the ETS in the overall Chinese efforts to first peak emissions before 2030 and then ultimately reach carbon neutrality by 2060. We do need to compare it to the other policies that are being pursued alongside it. And in the near term, I predict that policies that are regulating particulate matter pollution, for example, that are giving hard caps to overall coal consumption and energy production that have different regulations under the 14 five-year plan, for example, 
will put harder restrictions on many companies than they will face with the ETS. Right. That is what is likely to shift over time as the ETS evolves, not only to include a hard cap, but also to integrate major industrial sectors from the country. Mm. If it's able to do both of those things effectively, it will then become a primary, if not the primary instrument driving decarbonization in the country mm. and will give price signals that facilitate a sort of transition that towards more renewables coming online, towards the decarbonization of industry and the like. I see. But Patrick, uh, last uh, before we go, there has always been an important link between how local governments are being assessed in terms of their performance and how uh, systems like uh, environmental protection and also carbon trading is likely to be implemented. Do you see much connection now of the systems and how is it likely to work under the China circumstances? That's a very critical issue. You know, over the last 40 years, we have seen the local government have been their, uh, their performance has been evaluated based on their performance on economic growth. And in the next 40 years, and this will, will be the new measure. The new measure will be, you know, the local government will be measured by how they perform uh, in, the car, you know, in, the, uh, in achieving the target of carbon neutrality. I think that performance is not there yet, but the, the president, President Xi, already made the comments. Mm. He's asking every level of the local government to, to actually shoulder the responsibility, to, to take this very seriously, yeah. creating a roadmap, a action plan, and implementation plan, a timetable. So we are now seeing that the local government are really taking this as a political responsibility issue. Okay. That's something we're seeing right now, and uh, I think the next 40 years, that's something we're going to see again and again. I want to thank the four of you joining us, uh, updating us on the latest uh, leading up to China's uh, first uh, national carbon trading market. Qi Ye, Jackson Irwin, Catherine Kong, and Anthony Chen. Thank you so much for joining us.